Today we're somewhere in North St. Pete to do one of the more exciting but also one of the crazier things we've done on this channel. And in just a few minutes we're going to be joining our friends from Noble Nectar Apiaries on a honeybee removal. Now we are not really sure what we are getting ourselves into today. We think it's going to be a little scary, a little fun, and I'm praying that we don't get stung so wish us luck. Those of you who know us and our channel know that we love to go on adventures, but as many of you also know, I've had some health issues that have limited my activity and our travels over the last several months. So we decided to look for an exciting adventure right here in St. Pete, and thankfully that led us to Matt and Allison. Now Skylar and I both love bees, but have always been a bit afraid of them as well. So this was a great chance to do something fun and exciting and also face our fears. So you might not be able to tell right now, but the bees are up in that corner and they think that there's probably a swarm up in the roof. They're gonna have to cut into the ceiling to remove and relocate the bees. So this is the instrument that they use to kind of tell where the bees are. Uh, they produce a lot of heat, so this instrument will tell them where they are in the ceiling. Allison's bringing up the bee box right now and shortly we're gonna be suiting up. While the time had almost come to put on our bee suits, First, we need some smoke, and lots of it. Okay, so it's not anything special, just pine needles. So the smoke from the pine needles is gonna interfere with the communication system with the bees, so it'll help the removal process go smoother, hopefully. I'm okay. pretty excited to find out if you guys wear all the bees. I know, look at how cute this is. I did not know you'd be so stylish today. I did not. It looks brand new. Yeah, it looks very nice. Skyler is putting his suit on. Those are our guest suits, so they get washed. All right, good to go. Where's your helmet? Oh, yeah, I can't forget that. <laughs> Make sure none of the bees get in there. I mean, they do let air through. They're not as bad as I thought they'd be. Yeah, these ones are vented. And thank goodness the suits were vented because it was already in the upper 80s on this late morning in May. So right now they are smoking the bees out. Oh yeah, you can see the bees getting a lot more active now. They're a lot more flying around. Skylar is going up to get a closer look. Ah, he's up there, right in with the bees. Oh, they want me to go up there where all the bees are. Now that we're here and seeing all the bees, I'm a little bit nervous. I didn't know that there would be ladder climbing involved today. <laughs> You see them all? Oh boy. While I did my best to stay calm while being surrounded by honeybees, Matt began cutting into the ceiling to remove the nest and to find the queen. Meanwhile, Allison was kind enough to answer some of our questions, and we had a lot of them. And what was the stuff you were spraying? So this stuff is basically a repellent. They don't like the smell of it. It's not toxic though. Okay. It smells like um like almond extract. So that just helps them to come out. Yeah, it just pushes them okay. out of that space. We noticed that there's a bunch of dead bees in the okay. patio below, and we think that they're going down these columns because they're hollow. With a hole in the ceiling cut, it was time to find out what we were working with. These ones are just alarming complaints are always loaded with honey. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Uh, I had no idea there were that many bees up here. This one's pretty small, too. This is a small one? Yeah, we've had them like oh. all the way, the whole way. Oh my Maddie. gosh. While this may have been far from the biggest nest Matt and Allison had encountered, it still seemed pretty insane to us, as it contained thousands of honeybees who didn't seem too thrilled about being disturbed. We watched as Matt and Allison began to remove one chunk of honeycomb at a time, but we couldn't help but wonder how they'd ever be able to locate the queen among thousands of other bees. Sometimes she's a hider, so sometimes it's hard to find. Sometimes what she'll do is, as we're removing comb, she's jumping, comb jumping basically. So she's, as we're taking one down, she's moving to the oh, next. So. <laughs> okay, moving target then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes we get lucky with pulling down and there she is. But finding this queen wouldn't come so easy, as comb after comb had worker bees only. See all the pollen in there? All oh, that's all pollen. And this is all honey right here. Now many of you may be wondering why it's so important to find the queen anyway. And that's because the queen is absolutely necessary for the hive to survive. Therefore, once the queen bee is removed, the rest of the bees will follow her into whatever container she's transferred into. 
We'll tell you some more about what we learned about the types of bees and their jobs later. But for now, let's get back to the removal. So the honeycombs and the box both stay here for all the bees to reload. I mean, we throw away most of this comb. Do you? Yeah. Okay. We'll get rid of it. Sometimes we'll squeeze the honey out and feed it to bees if we need to. It is really hard to know whether somebody's tried to spray them or not. Though. Yeah. Oh, so it could yeah. be contaminated. Exactly. Due to the risk of contamination, the honey from removals can't be extracted and sold. But Noble Nectar does sell the honey from their several local bee yards, which you can order from their website and even have delivered to your front door. As Matt continued to pull out more of the honeycomb, we found that each piece was absolutely dripping with honey. We learned that during the summer months when pollen is prevalent, the worker bees are extremely active in collecting pollen as well as producing lots of honey. For this reason, Matt and Allison tend to stay very busy with bee removals in the summertime, which is also the most challenging time to do them, both due to the stickiness of the combs and the heat. Skyler, I don't know why, but he wants me to unzip him so he can try some honey. I got honey on my hand and I have to oh get boy. rid of it. Your hair looks crazy. <laughs> How is it? Does it good. taste like normal honey? I think so. I mean, I got dust on my hand too, sure. so that's adding to the flavor. Dusty honey. And while just licking the honey off his fingers was good, Skyler couldn't pass up the chance to take a bite right out of the comb. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I always nice. wanted to do that. <laughs> you gotta lick more off your fingers. I know. <laughs> As Skylar enjoyed the freshest bite of honey he'd ever had, Matt continued to remove more and more pieces of the honeycomb. And even though there sure was plenty of sticky honey, the queen was still nowhere to be found. Oh yeah, look at that. I know I keep saying that, but every single one is like, whoa. As the search for the queen continued, the workspace continued to get hotter, stickier, and dustier. And it was becoming abundantly clear that bee removals are far from an easy job. Yeah, this is hard work. So you're spraying that in the areas you don't want them to go to, right? Yeah, correct. Try to keep them contained. While this queen was proving to be quite elusive, she was running out of spots to hide. So these are all drones right here, these big ones. Oh, they're drones? Yeah. Oh yeah, we, and we those were are curious. Males. Is that right? Uh -huh. So there's drones, worker bees, and the queen. So how do you tell the difference between the drones and the worker bees? They're all different sizes, different shapes. Okay. And the drones so, like, do not sting. So, right. so, so the drones are kind of like, I don't know, they look like they're been working out, right? They're, yeah. They're, they're bulky. Rounded, yeah. They're bulky. The queen is long and slender. So at this point, all the combs have been removed, but the bees have been moving, and we're trying to find the queen. They think they just found it. Oh, that's what that tool's for. Yeah, she's in there. There's a bee that's long right here. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's I see her. it. Oh, wow, yeah. She's too big to get out of there. Yep, but they can get in to take care of her. So oh, this just keeps her cool. keeps her in the box so that all the bees will go to the box. Did you see how long and slender she is? This one's actually quite slender. So the clip with the queen goes in the box and stays there. With the queen in the clip and the clip in the box, it was now time to hang the box, which would become this colony's new temporary home. After allowing the bees a few days to settle in, Matt and Allison would come back to remove the box and transport it to one of their bee yards. Skyler is getting ready to come down. Here you've got a better view of that bee box, and you can already see a lot of the bees are heading in that direction. Oh my gosh. This is probably the most dangerous part of this removal process. Not so much for us because we kind of stayed out of the process, but if you've got your shoes covered in honey and your gloves covered in honey, then trying to navigate up and down a ladder, that is risky. You got some bee friends, turn around. Got one on your back here and one on your head. So I'm happy to report we did make it through the bee removal without falling off the ladder or getting stung. We learned a lot and had a lot of fun, but we are sweating buckets in these things because they are hot, so we are ready to get out of them. Not gonna lie, when we got here today, I was pretty nervous, especially climbing up the ladder to be with all the bees for the first time, but I'm so glad that we did it, and I'm very thankful to both Allison and Matt who allowed us to tag along and just kind of experience it all and share it with you all today. Now next, we are gonna go to one of their bee yards to show you where the bees go after they are removed. Oh my gosh. I bet that feels good, huh? Yeah, feels really good. Your hair looks great. I know, it looks really <laughs> beautiful. I would definitely recommend you put in your hair in a beekeeper's net. It will look gorgeous. <laughs> All right, you're clear. Your hair also looks fabulous. <laughs> 
After an incredibly fun day spent with noble nectar on a bee removal, it was finally time to experience the beekeeping side of their business. Now that we've shown you a bee removal, you may be wondering what happens to all of those bees. And that brings us here to Terracilla, Florida at one of Noble Nectar's bee yards where you're gonna find hundreds of thousands of bees and during certain times of the year, a whole lot of honey. So a box like this, if it was completely empty, probably housed 20,000 or more bees in it. But mm -hmm. once they start drawing out the comb, it starts making less space and then they get moved into these bigger boxes. Okay. You know, they can get up to 100,000 in a colony. Wow. While we explore around this bee yard, we want to talk a little bit more about the three types of honeybees. The most common honeybee is the worker bee, which are all female and take on varying roles in the colony during their lifetime, including foraging for food and water, comb building, creating and storing honey, guarding the hive from intruders, brood nursing, and attending to the queen. A whopping 98% of bees in a colony are worker bees, and they generally have a lifespan of anywhere from six weeks to six months. Worker honeybees can sting, but will die almost immediately after doing so. The other 2% of bees consist almost entirely of male bees, also known as drones. Unlike female honeybees, drone bees cannot sting and are basically only capable of two things, eating and mating. And since the only female bee that is capable of mating is the queen, it makes sense why there isn't a need for too many guys around the hive. Like the worker bees, drones normally only live for a few weeks to a few months. And finally, you have the queen. As the only member that is capable of reproducing, the queen's primary job in the hive is to do just that. Queen bees do live the longest at around one to three years or even longer. When the time comes for a colony to replace the queen, nurse worker bees will begin feeding newly hatched female larvae with a special diet of royal jelly. And when a new queen is deemed acceptable by the colony, the reigning queen will be replaced. Now that you know about the types of honeybees, we're gonna show you a bit of what goes into keeping a bee yard. Oh, yeah, we need to harvest all of it. Oh, that's full of honey. That looks good. This is what the frame looks like to start out with. Okay. And they'll start drawing out the wax on there. They're just now starting to build comb on there. I thought this was full of uh, honey, but it looks like the oh, queen got, got it through the excluder. So okay. That's brood. That's honey. Okay, so the honey is down here. The honey is right along the edges here. And then what did you call the stuff in the center? This is called brood. Brood. This is how the bees reproduce. The queen will lay eggs down in here and then they'll oh. develop into larvae and then into pupa and then into a full grown bee. But we learned that there's not supposed to be honey and brood in the same frame. So they're reproducing and making honey within the same box. Yeah, and we use this queen excluder. So She's the queen, queen is normally in the top or the bottom? The bottom. She's but the, the bottom. queen escaped from the bottom to the top. She, she must have squeezed somehow. through the bar. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there's one half and it's crawling out right now. Right there. That is really cool to see. So all yeah, those little comes. areas are bees. Yep. They will all emerge as a fully grown bee. Like I mean, they're like having full like, size already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was really surprised at how big it was. Yeah, I, I, I mean, thought it'd be smaller. Yeah, it's a fully smaller. developed bee. Wow. There's the queen right there. She doesn't mark yet. See her right there? Oh. What do you use to mark her with? Oh, we'll show you that. Cool. So we're trying to That's... get her stuck between these bars right here. Okay. She can't move in there. Mark them with a dot on their abdomen like that. Doesn't hurt them. They'll try and clean it off immediately. We learned that the queens are marked to help their keepers know their age. And of course, it also makes them a bit easier to spot in a crowd. We have changed out of our bee suits because Matt and Allison actually had some beekeeping tasks they needed to take care of today. But we do wanna say thank you to Noble Nectar Apiaries for letting us come out and see what it's like to be a beekeeper in Florida and also a bee relocation specialist. If you're interested in trying their honey or learning about their nonprofit, then make sure to visit their website and also their social media accounts. Overall, this experience was a little scary and really hot, but it was also very educational and a lot of fun. Now, this is something that is totally different than what we typically put on our channel. So if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to let us know in the comments, because if there's interest, who knows what we will get up to next. And if you're interested in seeing what there is to do in the St. Pete area, we'd recommend checking out this playlist next. Thanks for watching.